So coming to brachytherapy, we have uh, come from a dose, uh, days of low dose radiation to high dose rate, uh, high dose rate uh, brachytherapy. So LDR is a low dose rate that will become very small amount of radiation giving over continuously over a few days, like at least few hours, 14 hours to 36 hours. Continuously, the source should be inside the body. Patient cannot move. But a high dose rate, it can just give up within uh, five to seven minutes and the patient can go home and again come for the next session. And this also evolved use, uh, with the utilization of the imaging, that is image-based brachytherapy, where advanced imaging modalities are used to gain the information, like uh, CT-based or MR-based. Image-guided brachytherapy used when you use the same images for planning also. So during planning, you utilize these fused with your CT simulation and can plan accordingly which areas you want to concentrate now. Also, you can use the pre-treatment pre images and uh, you want to consider for low-risk regions. So this is how image-assisted brachytherapy is done. And uh, so this is a picture showing uh, brachytherapy applicator. And this is also being taken use of the ultrasound guided device. So here you can see the needles in the ultrasound, how they are being placed so that you can avoid some uh, normal structures and place properly in your treatment zone. So this is uh, one more thing, real-time dynamic uh, image guided brachytherapy. Here, uh, uh, as a routine procedure, you will do the uh, ultrasound placement of the needles. And again, you check with the imaging and real-time assessment is done and planned on the spot and can be delivered. So coming to uh, even recent novel things, which we have uh, already spoke about, that's MR LINAC. That is magnetic resonance imaging based LINAC. So, Ideally, what radiation needs is ability to tailor the dose fractionation, radiation therapy methods, delivery, as well as efficiency. So to combine all this, it's really difficult. So every few uh, now and then we are trying to find some solutions to come up with newer novel methods to deliver radiation. So, and MR LINAC has the peculiar capability to adapt. So you can see we want local tumor control in this uh, region, the more it should be towards the right. And also normal tissue should be always kept safe from the higher radiation. So the more the gap is, the good the radiation plan becomes. So what MR LINAC has, it has greater capability and you know already MRE is a gold standard for soft tissues and uh, it can give clear imaging data for precise planning. And also there is a possibility of functional imaging. So you can use diffusion weighted MRIs or also to check with the angiogenesis that how blood vessels are developing. This gives the data like where exactly the tumor is more concentrated, where there will be more number of blood vessels. And also hypoxia, that is tumor might have undergone a necrosis, that area might be lacking oxygen. As radiation requires oxygenation, we can see where that is uh, differences and we can plan accordingly which dose should go where. So it is also integrated with real-time dynamic image. So during the treatment itself, it can uh, check what is the position of our plan and also on the on the board position of uh, our regions. So it can re in real time it can adapt. We can change the plan on the spot and we can deliver. So it it is almost like a precision radiation delivery. So this is how it happens daily dose localization, and again, MR simulation planning. Again, disease will be adapted using the biological targeting with the real-time MRI, and again, treatment will be delivered. So this is an example showing how the MR-based LINAC is. These are the old days, and now we have been constructed into very compact things which can set up in a small room. So in summary, uh, what is the current situation with them is, machines have already been into the factory production. Few centers have already been installed, especially in the Western. And also we are also getting uh, now in India. And the physics issues are also being trained by the physics and also certain things uh, need to be observed for the future. And clinical workflows are also being developed now. And uh, clinical trials have to be started once MRL index are also being into more pronounced utilization every day, but the cost is really, really high. And so not all centers can go for it. 
and the latest breakthrough in radiation is the flash radiotherapy and it is evolving right now and uh, and it is going to show tremendous promise and i will tell you why because uh leave aside the history i think we are running short of time so what happens is if you give conventional radiation we cannot give more than 2 gray per fraction that is per day so to give 70 gray of dose you need 35 days but flash therapy is one thing which delivers 1000 gray in a single second can you imagine treatment happens within second and the patient can go home so that uh, that level of capability is there with the flash radiotherapy and it is now evolving already uh, experiments have been done on mice uh, by treating the melanoma and there are excellent results with that see in this image if you treat 28 gray on a conventional radiation you will see the alteration or grade 2 grade 3 differences but if you give flash radiotherapy you can't see any such uh, uh, reactions that means it gives high dose to the treatment and very 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 less reactions that is like a differential treatment of normal tissue versus cancer and which really is our uh, dream till now so if you can deliver a very high amount of dose to uh, tumor and uh, your tissues are always safe we don't need to bother about the margins or how much volume you are treating and whether the patient can be limited or you can go extensively so this is about flash therapy and now already in some universities in usa they have started recruiting human patients for certain types of diseases to see how effective it is and so here you can see the dose rate is 40 gray per second is minimum and uh, it can achieve up to 1000 gray per second also nowadays even for srs radio surgery we are only giving around 12 to 20 gray per uh, that is not second that will go around half an hour to one hour imagine you are giving such a high dose within second and the time duration for treatment will come down and reproducibility problems will not be there like today it is here tumor tomorrow it may be changed that is not at all a problem now and also Uh, no dose limiting effect because animal models show 25 to 41 gray there are no harm to any other organs and radiation now the work is going on x rays and protons and uh, the ability of turning a normal linear accelerator into a flash radiotherapy is a possibility few centers have done in france and italy and uh, that's actually a boon because you don't need to buy, buy a new machine you can just convert your existing linear accelerators so generally in radiation they depend on oxygen depletion cells if there is no oxygen there won't be much effect of radiation but flash therapy doesn't need all these things it can simply kill the tumor cells irrespective of their state okay so this is an example treated with flash radiotherapy multi resistant t cell lymphoma on day 0 and this is 3 weeks see how beautifully it has been cured of and there are no reactions also and this you see they have delivered 150 gray per second and 15 gray just requires 90 milliseconds so as i said uh, that graph which shows tumor co tumor control probability and normal tissue control see uh, this is almost like ideal the 13.5 gray is tolerable for most normal tissues a 20 gray flash boost could contribute to bed of 100 in many clinical situations so you can imagine how much uh, good work can be done without uh, hampering the normal tissues and you don't need to think of limiting the dose and you can go as high to destroy the tumor so what are the advantages better normal tissue sparing and fewer fractions of treatment like compliance and quality of life will be very very good and ultra short treatment times means no interfraction motion management and also the heavy workload on uh, treating uh, so many people and uh, giving slots every day every day they have to come these all things will just vanish off so what challenges lie ahead with that we need to modify the existing linux so that uh, it can deliver such a high dose and uh, we have already seen modified varian or modified electa doing this in stanford and sweden and a few other places have done that development of flash very high energy electrons is in the process now and some centers are changing protons based like the proton therapy into flash therapy so other challenges are quality assurance and dose metric verification which should be monitored for certain time before coming into regular practice 
and evaluation of uh, dose fraction and schedules. Now what we have is a system has been accompanied for the last 20, 30 years. Now the whole radiobiology changes with this and new modalities of fractionation has to be thought of. So that concludes my presentation on emerging advances in radiation oncology.